Alright. Oh god. Marker. You gotta have the sound too though. So that way you can find the peak faster, right? Alright. Is this big enough for you? You might as well have the laptop like in the in the shot. In the shot so it doesn't look awkward. <clears throat> Can you see that just fine? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know where to start. All right, here we go. What's up, guys? My name's Tony. My name's Mete. And we're AJV. We're Audio Joins Video. Today, we're going to be doing a quick review over the specs of the Denon AVR X4500H. Um, just something straightforward, something to kind of talk about. We are going to be doing a more in-depth review in the next coming weeks. We're going to be running through everything, making sure we get the most use out of this receiver. I mean, it, it is pretty feature-packed. I mean, on the back here, we do have seven HDMI inputs. Um, they are all 4K, 2.2, HDCP, mm -hmm. and HDMI... 2.0 on this yep. one, right? So that's yeah. the 18 gigabits per second. It's yeah. not going to be the 2.1, which the new ones are going to be coming out with. But, you know, you know, I mean, I, nobody really has 8K content coming no. out right now. So, I mean, even if you buy this guy, yeah, even if you buy this guy, still going to be very useful in the next five to 10 years, to be honest. I mean, it does all your um, legacy inputs too. It's got five RCA inputs on the back. And it's also got one phono input on the back for all your vinyl lovers out there. Um, and also, people that do like streaming on this, it does have um, Denon Heos on it, which does Spotify, Pandora, Tidal. Um, as well as connect to speakers around the house. Yeah, as well as if you do have wireless speakers, let's say outside or in, let's say, the kitchen, bathroom, you could connect those as well to this receiver. Anything Heos compatible. Yeah. yeah it's pretty, and, pretty fascinating. And it is smart home... Um, integratable as well so you could connect it to all your voice commandable yeah. options won't say them right now because everyone's phones will be going nuts but yeah all your small smart home integrations um, it also does have Bluetooth so if you do want to stream some audio from your phone that let's say from like YouTube or anything like that you could do that on Don't this receiver Wi-Fi yeah um, if not you got Wi-Fi and network capability hardwire Ethernet as well yeah um, it does have eARC through a firmware upgrade. So what eARC does is let's say you're watching something on a TV and you've got a smart TV and you're not necessarily streaming it through like a Blu-ray player. What eARC will do is actually stream that audio that's from your TV into the receiver so you can enjoy uncompressed audio from all your streaming uh, services like Fudu, Netflix, um, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Hulu, Spotify Amazon Prime. if you yep. want to run it through that. Mm-hmm. There's there's so many options out there. Yeah, Disney Plus. I think you already mentioned that. Oh yeah, Disney Plus does Disney do Plus um, is good. Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision. Yeah. Um, now, when it comes to the formats that this receiver can do, it does do the Dolby Vision. It does basic like 4K, um, but you got the coloring for Dolby Vision HDR10, um, IMAX Enhance as well. That's both audio and video, um, and it does pass through 3D and also upscales lower resolutions to the 4K. Uh, it does have three HDMI outputs, which is nice because if you want to connect it to another room, let's say the kitchen, and you're watching the football game, grabbing some nachos to eat during it, you can actually have it hardwired straight over into the kitchen. You can watch the game continuously between both displays, mm -hmm. um, which is also nice because if you've got kids and you want to do a separate room, they can play Xbox in one room and then you can watch the TV in the other room. Mm -hmm. So you can do two different things at once or the same. Yeah, like say if you have like a projector set up in your house, mm -hmm. With exactly. the TV, roll the screen switch down, it right over. switch it right over with this unit. Won't have any issues. Mm -hmm. uh, does also have your standard RCA outputs as well, um, both video for monitors as well as RCA outputs if you want to run it as a preamp. Mm -hmm. So if you want to run preouts to you know separate receivers, you can do that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because speaking of that, this only has a nine channel amplifier built in, but it has 11 channel processing. So in order to use those extra three channels, you would have to use the pre-outs on the back of this receiver um, for your Dolby Atmos, DTS-X, and Aurora, Aurora, I can't even pronounce Aurora, that right. Aurora 3D. Aurora 3D, yes. 
which most people are going to be using Dolby Atmos and DTS X anyways because those are the main spatial yeah formats that are out there audio yeah formats they're all lossless mm -hmm. um, so yeah with the 11 channel processing to get the most out of this receiver we definitely would suggest to do a two channel separate amp mm -hmm. and then run the rest of the power through this receiver yes because the more internal amplification you can save on this the more power you will actually get out to your speakers because this unit here two channels driven is 125 watts but when it's driven in nine channels it's a it's a little bit lower i would say what half Maybe yeah, like, probably around like 60 to 40 watts per channel. Yeah, so the more external amplification you could get, the more amplifier power this will put out. But, I mean, for most homes... You don't really need to worry you, about that. Yeah, you don't much. need it. This Depending is more on the for, type of speakers you got. Yeah. They're being nitpicky. Like, mm -hmm. most of you guys aren't even going to know what the total harmonic distortion is. Yeah. If you're curious, it's 0.05%, which is fairly good. It's getting close to that really audio good. file yeah. levels right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's it's still going to give you a lot of bang for your buck. It's still going to give you a wonderful Oh, home, yeah. Yeah, no, it's definitely experience. A, it's, it's high up there. Yeah. Um, now, when you set this up in the home, we've got calibration set up, right? Now, calibration set up is where you have all these speakers. Everybody has different speakers. Everybody has a different room. This will calibrate the system to sound the best way possible, the most accurate way for your room. So we're talking about like reflections, things like that. What your speakers can and can't do when it comes to mm -hmm. um, their output. Certain audio frequencies. Yeah. And yeah. it even tells you if you wired it the wrong way. So yeah. <laughs> if you plug in a speaker backwards and put black and red and red and black, which we got to admit some people have done it before. I've uh, seen it happen. I've, I've been one of them. I've myself. seen it happen where someone hooked the red cable up to the surround and then the black cable and, up to the And you don't even channels. know half the yeah. time because you're just digging in the back. Yeah. Um, what this has for calibration is the Odyssey Multi EQXT32, which I believe is just like a 32 band type of. Um, 32 band or 32 bit? Maybe it's both. I yeah. Know. It could be both. Could be both. We'll look into that as well. Yeah. Um, I did a quick run through of it earlier today where you have um, about eight different listening positions that you'll put the microphone around in, and it'll just uh -huh. do basic sweeps throughout all the speakers. Uh, really ties it together and you also get multiple eq mm -hmm. options such as like flat and dynamic or if you want a quieter listening and the reason it does those different positions is because not everyone's going to be sitting on top of each other in mm -hmm. one spot people are going to be spread across the room so what the calibration does do is try to make every it every place it out across yeah. the across the whole couch yeah so if you got like a three-person couch it'll actually balance it out a yeah. lot better. So that way everyone can hear kind of like the same frequencies mm -hmm. and the same tonal qualities of your home theater system. Yeah. Now, for one of the EQ options, there is the LFC, uh, which is an option to actually lower the resonance of your subs uh, and, and their walls. So if you want to be more quiet and you're afraid of having subwoofers when you live in an apartment complex, uh, it lowers down the like the reverb in the room so mm -hmm. that way it doesn't vibrate the walls as much uh -huh. we are going to be heavily testing that as well as a couple other options yes um features on this receiver see how see how well that works because mm -hmm. you know if you live in an apartment people are next door especially if you got like really thin yeah, walls you don't want to be waking people up yeah we'll see if there's you know you need to do a little bit more if the denon does a good enough job to actually mm -hmm. keep the cops from being called <laughs> The nice thing about this as well is you got dual uh, independent sub control for the volume. So if you want to have one sub louder than the other, in case like one person thinks it's too loud over on that side, you can always just individually adjust them. Mm -hmm. Not if you're an apartment though, because you're going to be using that other feature, which will tone the subs oh, down. Yeah. We'll you don't see how that goes. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know how well that's going to work, mm -hmm. but we'll see if it actually sounds you know at least playable when it comes to listening to movies. I mean, I, I think it'll do a good job. But, but I mean, we'll, like you we'll said, see. we'll see. We'll see. Um, you have any thoughts so far before we go into in-depth review next week? I mean, it does run a little hot. Okay, it uh, does. It's very warm. So if you got a closed cabinet, definitely think about keeping some fans in there, some mm -hmm. opening it up to let it cool down sometimes. And overall, sound quality-wise, I would compare it eh, probably like to a Pioneer. Uh, in terms of yeah, Pioneer and Marantz, yeah. they're all going to be fairly close to each other. Mm -hmm. Yamaha is going to be a little bit different, as well as Arcam, yeah. Rotel, 
Macintosh, you got all the other different stuff. I mean, it does have an AB amplifier in it, which class AB amplifier, yeah. which is great. Cause which is great. Cool. Which audio files, if you're an audio file, you know what class AB means. Basically, it sucks up a lot more power. Yeah, you know, that's raises, why it raises why it runs, your bill in the house for yeah. electricity. I mean, not by much, but I mean, it's good. That's why it runs so hot. That's why we recommend either having it out in the open or if you have it in the cabinet, make sure there's enough clearances and make sure you got adequate air flowing yeah. through. Um, talking about that, there is other things that we do want to be testing on the channel. Um, they've got cooling systems for receivers. Mm -hmm. You got other receivers that we just purchased that we want to go through preamps as well. Um, which that reminds me, this guy does do separate preamps. So if you want to turn off the, the amplification in here mm -hmm. to decrease interference, you can definitely do that. So for people who are like, I don't know if I should wait to do separates. This is a good stepping block because you can have this, you have the power. And then once you buy your separate amps, you can amplify it straight yeah. up and just turn it right off. What we could do is actually, if people want to like venture off into the separate market, you could turn the amp off in here. Yeah. We could have an outlaw model 5,000 to test, and just which is it right to it. We can it's a, load it up. You could look at reviews for that amp. It's a great amp. It's priced right. And it'll give you the power that you need. Yeah. Actually more than what it's we, rated. We got a bunch yeah. of different amps that we're going to be testing. Uh, we're going to be testing, what else? We got some subwoofers, some SVSs, right. um, some Paradigm speakers, as well as some Kef speakers. Some coming out actually in the next month the or so. The Parasounds. Yep. And Parasound the Rotel. Amps and Rotel amps as yeah. well. So feel free to give us some feedback. We want to know what you guys want to see. We're trying to do something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got channels of stuff like that. You forgot one thing. We like to play around. You with forgot it. one thing. What's that? TVs. TVs. Audio joins video. It's true. Yes, yep. we're going to have to spend some money on some high-end TVs and yep. some projectors. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. we got the Sony that we, we can test. We got the Sony OLED. We got, we got, the, got LG. the LG OLED. Mm -hmm. um, let's see if Samsung ever comes out with an OLED, right? Well, they're OLED phones. I don't know why they don't yeah. do TVs. But, mm -hmm. I mean, we could also test non-OLEDs, too. Like, say, compare a high-end Sony non-OLED to a Sony OLED. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a bunch of different options, and yeah. we should be able to put that through. And um, not everything. Four K Blu Ray players as well. We <laughs> yes. can test a bunch of them. And and don't forget, not everything's going to be good for everybody. Yeah. No, because everybody's going to have different things, different brightness if levels. You're, if you're watching a movie in the dark, oh, that's the way to go. Mm -hmm. But if you never watch movies in the dark, well, it's true. It's you true. know, if you got a bright room, OLED may not be the best for you. Yeah. So that's kind of. Hopefully a rough introduction of what we want to do in the channel. And feel free to leave feedback. We want to be like the average Joes, but also get a little bit nerdy and go into some tech specs, stuff like that. Yeah, and high-end stuff. Yeah, we, 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 we are more of like the higher-end area now, mm -hmm. uh, personally, uh, both of us. But we, I mean, we like the little stuff, too. Yeah, we want, like, to, we want to get people you know introduced to this type of thing. And, I mean, it's definitely changed my life in a better way, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Especially with all the new Netflix stuff coming out too. I mean, oh, anybody God. can watch Dolby Netflix. Vision and Dolby Atmos movies. Even Amazon Prime, you got and the, it's, the boys. And it's really not that bad. You got the boys. You got your 4K Blu. I haven't. I need to watch the boys. Oh, that's a great. People show. Are, you got to watch bringing it. Bringing it up, but you got to watch it. It's I'm, a great show. I'm watching Mindhunter right now, so we'll see how that goes. I got to watch that. <laughs> it's really good. It's pretty good. But all I mean, right. yeah, all these new. I mean, the streaming services Dolby Vision. I mean, you the people like, don't believe me when I tell them hey you gotta come watch a movie in 4k hdr yeah yeah a lot of people just don't know it's once you once you know you a lot know. of people are like oh you know it's the same thing going from 1080p you know blu-ray to dvd they're gonna notice a little difference no you could sometimes this, tell these this, actors this are so wearing quite, wigs this quite on their head. Difference in yeah now. but uh, that wraps everything up yeah. um feel free to ask any more questions yeah. message us we'll try to get back to you message us let us know if you also want us to do some movie reviews as yeah, well you do some live stream events yeah um, try to get everything done as quick as possible for you guys yep. all right so i'm tony i'm mate this is ajv where audio joins video have a great night you too Boom. oh i said you too fuck <laughs> dude you're starting to get so derailed i'm like dude let's wrap this up i was like no